Hi, Dr. Roseanne, and today we're talking about brain fog. I'm an integrative and pediatric mental health expert who is on a mission to change the way we view and treat children's mental health. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so you get my videos every week. Let's dive in. What is brain fog? You know, brain fog isn't itself a medical condition, but rather a reflection of an underlying medical condition. Brain fog symptoms can include problems with being alert, particularly in the morning, or at times when you really have to power up and concentrate, like at school or at your job. It can mean that you have poor concentration and focus in general. And one of the biggest things that is associated with brain fog, besides that overall kind of fuzzy thinking, is memory problems. Most people who report having brain fog have memory problems. And what does that mean? It means that you can have a problem retrieving information, it's that tip of the tongue effect, and you're talking around it. You know that thing that you use to clean the floor with and you put it in a bucket and you get it wet and you clean the floor. You know what I mean? A mop. That's sort of that tip of the tongue and that can be quite an experience. It also can be short-term memory. So remembering something more immediate, like, hey, take this phone number down and dial it. It could be working memory. So I'm gonna give you this phone number and <laughs> You're going to have to memorize it and use it in a few minutes. That's a different kind of memory. And then it can be, like we talked about, that tip of the tongue is also more dependent on long-term memory. So information that you've had to hold on to and store for a long time. And then all, there's all different kinds of memory. So your memory can really feel very different with brain fog. You know, having worked with people with infectious disease and Lyme disease for almost 25 years now, um, that one of the things that people come into me who with infectious disease, one of the top symptoms is that they complain about brain fog. Their thinking isn't as crisp. It's not the only source of brain fog, but it it certainly is a common one in areas that we call high endemic areas. So that's those are areas that have very high levels of tick-borne disease. Let's talk about other sources of brain fog. Chronic stress can cause brain fog, right? So you can't just constantly be under stress and think your brain is going to be super, super sharp. It's not going to happen. It's sort of like driving your car with no brake pads. That's what chronic stress does to the brain and body. And brain fog is a very, very common symptom of chronic stress. Other types of infectious diseases, including COVID. So I have the privilege of doing QEEG brain maps, and I am seeing what we call COVID brains, which uh, are very viral looking, and COVID will come in as well as things like Epstein-Barr and other types of viruses will come in and sort of shut off your functioning of your brain, and people are coming in saying, I have brain fog. Another top source of brain fog is hormone issues. For kids, it could be that they're in the hormone heightened stage of puberty. And for us moms, it could be perimenopause. And I see this a lot with people with a prior history of birth trauma or head injury of any type, including concussion. So the brain can kind of reroute itself and sort of work around any type of damage or dysfunction. But when hormone changes happen, we need certain hormones for our memory system to work properly. And so when they decrease or are too high, then our memory will go down and we feel a brain fog. Poor sleep, poor diet, 
Those are two big reasons. You can't fuel your body with garbage and expect it to be a Ferrari. As somebody who likes to think they can shortchange sleep and that I'm always trying to really work so hard every single day, seven days a week to really prioritize sleep, you can't shortcut sleep and think your brain is going to work optimally. People tell me all the time, I only need five hours to sleep, baloney. Some people do need less and some people do need more, but you know, on average, the average adult is optimal in terms of brain functioning at seven and a quarter hours of sleep. We know that if you're getting less than five hours of sleep and you're operating a car in that fatigue state, you're actually driving like a person who's intoxicated. Another source of brain fog is yeast overgrowth or candida, an increasingly common problem in this world of poor diet. It's way more common than you think. I've seen it in children many times. The great news, it's correctable with diet and supplements to um, help kill the overgrowth. Endocrine system is really tied to how our brain works. So having adrenal burnout or thyroid issues can be a source of brain fog. It's really important to get those checked. And not just for your thyroid, not just a standard TSH test. You want a full thyroid panel. Autoimmune disorders. So we know autoimmune disorders are on the rise and it's pretty standard if you have autoimmune disease to also have cognitive processing issues like brain fog. So what's my Dr. Rowe know? Thinking that you have ADD when it's really brain fog. Brain fog, as we talked about, isn't a medical condition in itself, but reflects an underlying medical condition. Yes, people with ADHD have concentration and focus issues, but the clinical definition, those issues have to start before age seven. When you look at somebody's history, they're unfocused. So if you're just all of a sudden turning up and having focus issues, whether you're 47 or your kid is nine, think about an underlying medical issue. And the best way to address that is to go to a functional physician. So what's my Dr. Rowe go? Looking for medical sources and not just relying on a questionnaire (laughs) that says you have ADHD. There's a lot of reasons why your child, your teenager, or yourself could be unfocused. Many people with focus issues and brain fog have things like infectious disease or adrenal burnout due to chronic stress. So do a really thorough job, have your child or teenager examined by a functional physician to get to the bottom of it. It could be as simple as a major nutrient deficiency that could be supplemented, that could create some major awesome things for your kids, meaning they can start getting their brain focused again, have their memory come back, and really just be alert and more self-confident. So remember, if you are a child you care about is struggling, it's gonna be okay. I am here to show you how to help kids and teens feel calm, alert, and good about themselves. I wanna hear how you are dealing with brain fog. Drop it in the comments below. Catch you on the next episode. And remember, subscribe to the Dr. Roseanne channel where we talk about natural and effective ways to reduce and reverse mental health.